in structure members so as we discussed last time pretension in detachioning is done that tendon is stretched first and then of course this is done when, when the molds are placed there means the tendons are stretched keeping it in the mold then concrete is poured into it and then it is out to set so that concrete gets efficient and then we cut our tendons and then provide the anchorage so this is done in the pre-tensioning so as it is clear from its name pre-tensioning means tensile forces are developed first in the tendons then concreting is done that structural member is formed but as it is opposite to the pre-tensioning now the post-tensioning post-tensioning means first we are forming or creating our structural member then what we do that while making our structural member we leave a duct we leave a duct in throughout the length of the structural member and this duct we use for passing the tendons through it so the process is that in first step what we'll be doing that we will be casting the member and while casting ducts or grooves will be left there in the member and this duct or the groove will house the tendons then tendons are passed through the duct and these tendons are stretched by using various devices means we are providing the 
tensile forces we are creating the giving the tensile forces to the tendons and then these tendons are anchored at the end <coughs> then this tensile force that we have given to the tendons this will be transferred to the concrete member through the anchorages anchorages means the systems or devices that we provide at the end of the two ends of the member so those devices are called anchorages so these anchorages are provided and through these anchorages what is done that tensile forces that we gave to the tendons then it is passed on to the concrete member but of course of the opposite nature because in tendon it is a tensile force whereas on the concrete member the forces coming out will be compressive nature so this is of opposite nature in tendon it is tensile stress in concrete member it will be developing the compressive stresses now there are two methods of transfer of the pre stressing force and this these two methods depends on that what is the shape of the duct duct can be of the two shapes one is that straight duct we are providing a straight duct in this case what is happening that there is usually no contact between the tendon and the duct duct is the tendon is passing through the duct and the contact is at the ends of the member through the anchorages so the whole of the pre stressing force is being transferred through the anchorages and this nature of the force will be the axial forces means the forces are transferred axially through the anchorages at the end of the member in second case the duct may be curved and in this case what happens when the duct is curved there is a contact between the tendon and the duct so what happens here that axial transfer of the force is taking place at that two ends of the member as well as due to the radial pressure that is generated at the contact point of the tendon and the duct that is present in the member as those contact points a radial pressure will be developed and through this radial pressure this pre stressing force will also be transferred to the member so these are the two methods means axial transfer and the through the development of the radial pressure so this way the pre stressing force is transferred from tendons to the structural member now let us see what type of post tensioned concrete members are generally we divide these post tensioned concrete members into two categories and these two categories depends upon that whether the duct has been filled with the concrete or it is grouted or whether it is not grouted if the space between the duct left over space between the duct and the tendon inside the duct if it is filled with by grouting then we call it as bonded post tensioned member concrete members if we are not filling that gap by grouting then it will be unbonded post tension concrete member so these are the two different categories of the post tension concrete members and this classification depends whether the space inside the duct is filled by grouting or not it is simple classification bonded and unbonded what is the advantage in case of bonding in case of bonded post tension concrete members the advantage one of the advantage 
we get is that this grout in the duct protects the tendon from corrosion. There are other advantages also, but first direct advantage is because that space is filled with the grout, so this grout will protect the tendons from corrosion. Now, as I told you that encourage, encourage systems help in transfer of the pre-stressing force and also it helps in avoiding the slippage of the wires. So, this encouraging, encourage systems are of different types means based on the device that what device we are using for the encourage we divide the encouraging systems into three categories basically first in which we use the keys or wedges so how it is used these keys or the wedges are fixed at the mouth of the duct at both ends to provide frictional grip or wedge action on the wire ends. We will explain different devices falling into this particular category. Next category is rivet, he rivet heads or bolt heads. This category we call as direct bearing also. Means where we are forming the rivet heads or bolt heads at the ends of the wires. These rivet heads or the bolt heads are formed at the end of the wires and these, these rivet heads and the bolt heads helps us or act as the encourage system. Next category is where we provide the, where we do the looping of wires. In this category, the wires or the tendons, a looping of these wires is done at the end of the member. So, this category is called as looping of wires. So, these are the three broad categories of the encouraging systems. Now, we will take one by one these encourage systems. First, let us take the wedge action. So, in this wedge action, there are different uh, you can say the patented encourage systems. Uh, they are called after the names of the developers of these systems. Uh, just like first is Gifford Odal encourage system. Second in this category is Frazinet encourage system. Third is Anderson encourage system. And the last is Magnell Balton Encourage System. These are the four different type of encourage system that falls in the category of the wedge action, where we are using the wedge for anchoring purpose. We will see one by one these systems. First of all, here you see Gifford Odal Encourage System. And as it is seen from this uh, graphic, in this encourage system, we use split cones. There is a split cone and the tendon is put between these split cones and this whole assembly of tendon and the split cone, it is put inside a hollow cylindrical cone at one end and in between these in between these cones and that uh, hollow cylindrical cone and the member there is a bearing plate always bearing plate we use otherwise due to the high force that crushing of member at the end will take place if we do not provide the bearing plate. So, this is the system how we provide anchorage 
in the case of Gifford, Odal and Kress system. And as you, as I told you, this comes under the category of the wedge action because it is taking the help of the wedge action. So you see, this is the split cone. One part of the split cone is shown here. The whole whole cone is uh, shown here. And this is pain. This is space. As you see here, this is uh, curved here. So when you put the both the parts one above uh, above the other one on the other then a space is left here so this tendon is passed through this space here in this and this whole split cone is put inside a hollow cylindrical cone so this makes this anchorage system and in this case what we do that each wire is tensioned separately as I told you bearing plate as you see here in this figure this is the bearing plate and this is the bearing plate this is the wedge you see here so and this is wedge plate where you see a hollow con uh, conical space so in this hollow conical space this split cone and tendon wire this goes into this and this rests ultimately at the end of the bearing plate so this is the assembly in this this is a strand that you see this is the strand this is a split cone or the wedge this is wedge plate and this is bearing plate so as i told you bearing plate is provided blow anchorage so here this hole is anchorage system between the member concrete member it starts from here so between the concrete member and this anchorage system there is a bearing plate to avoid the local failure of the concrete due to crushing due to the high force that is present in the tent so this is the system here now in the same category in the category of wedge action the second type of anchorage system you see here is fresinet anchorage system and in this system also as it also falls in the wedge action category here also you see a cylinder which is conical inside this is a cylinder which is conical in shape inside and you see here the strands these are the strands this is the wedge plate this is finally resting on the bearing plate so and this is the concrete member hole is the concrete member so you see here the system that how this anchorage system works in case of fresinet anchorage system next system that we see here is Magnell Balton anchorage system this also falls in the category of the wedge action and in this Magnell Balton anchorage system what we are using is a sandwich plate you see here a sandwich plate with flat wedges here the wedges are flat and these are steel wedges you see the these are flat steel wedges and this hole is the sandwich plate these are tendons or the high tensile wires these are passing through this wedge as you see here one wire is shown here others are not shown this is one is shown for you that this wire is passing through this wedge here in the sandwich plate and here at the at the face of the member you see here a distribution plate and in this case this each sandwich plate can house up to five wires so five wires can be housed in a sandwich plate and one unit 
one unit of this at one end this can take from 2 to 64 wires so in this anchorage systems we can provide depend depending upon that how much force is to be given to the tendons or how much ultimate ultimately how much force we want to generate in the member depending upon that we will we can use in this case of magnal balton anchorage system we can use or we can house up to from 2 to 64 wires in a unit so this shows that how that magnal balton anchorage system works next get, uh, we will see here so these were the cases for the wedge action now let us see the cases for the direct bearing as I told you earlier in direct bearing either we are creating the rivet heads or bolted heads at the end of wires and these rivet or the bolted heads will be providing the resistance from slipping and this makes the anchorage system and in this direct bearing system what we do we are having two systems two categories one is Lee McCall system and second is Prescon and BBRV system so these systems we will study one by one in Lee McCall system what we are doing high steel strength bars here you just uh, take note that we are not using wires here we are using bars so this is the biggest difference here <coughs> high tensile strength bars of diameters varying from 12 to 40 mm are used as tendons so instead of wires we are using here the bars which are having diameters so you can choose from 12 mm to 40 mm diameter bars and of course the material is here high tensile strength steel so these are used as tendons in case of Lee McCall system then what we do these bars are threaded at the ends we are providing threads at the end of these bars then after tensioning each bar is anchored with the help of a nut and a washer which is held tightly against the end plate so what is the whole system that a bar is there uh, let's take that this is the bar at both ends threading is done and a nut and a washer is provided at each end and these are tightly held against a end plate so end plate are there and one end plate is there at the one end of the member this is the second end plate at the another end of the member uh, then these bar these nut and washers are provided at the both ends and these are then tightened so this way this system acts now let's see this in the figure this is the this is the figure for this Lee McCall system you see here this is the bar the, it is threaded at the end then you see here the bearing plate so this assembly of that nut this is the nut here so nut and the washer is provided and it is tightened and it finally the nut and the washer are resting finally at the bearing plate this is the bearing plate you see here this is the duct and through this duct this bar of high strength steel is passing through and here is one assembly shown that if required in case of uh, as I told you there are two types bonded and unbonded concrete members so in case if we want to have a bonded concrete member then grouting can be done a connection for the grout connection uh, grouting connection is provided this way in this system 
So, this is the Lee McCall system. Uh, there is one disadvantage with this system. As I told you that there are two systems for transferring the pre-stressing forces. Means in two ways the pre-stressing forces transferred in case of this uh, post-tensioned members. Uh, one was ac axial transfer and second was the through the radial pressure. So here we can have the transfer of the pre-stress through axial action only. Because here you cannot provide the curved tendons. Because in bars that curved providing the curved tendons is not possible. So that way this is the this is one of the advantage that if you want to provide the curved tendons in this case in this Lee uh, Lee-McCall system it is not possible in this system. Next system is Prescon system. Uh, in Prescon system we are providing the button heads means at the end of wires at the end of tendons we are creating button heads. As you see here in this picture these are the button heads that has been created in the uh, at the end of wires. This is the end bearing plate and this is the concrete member. So this shows here that how we are providing the anchorage in this case. So as I told you in this case we are creating the button heads at the end of tendons and these button heads are fit or giving us uh, the, uh, the force or, or the action that so that that wires do not slip. So this is the way in case of Prescon system. Next comes the looping tendon wires. So this is, this is the third category of the post tensioning systems. In this uh, case as it is clear from its name looping of wires is done <coughs> at the end. And in this category, we have two type of systems available. Uh, one is given by the Bohr-Leonhardt system. This is given by Bohr-Leonhardt. So it is called Bohr-Leonhardt system. Second is given, given by Leoba. So we call this as the Leo, Leoba system. So we will present here, I will tell you about the bohr leonhardt system. What is done in this bohr leonhardt system? That double tendons are wrapped around the end block. I will show the picture later. We are wrapping around the end block using the double tendons. Uh, let us see the picture. So this is, this is the this is the member here. This is cable. This is cable. So using the double tendon, we are wrapping this end block. Now what we do? End block is D shaped. And you see here in this picture, this is end block, which is of D shape. So this is at the one end at the end or at the end of the member this D shaped block is provided and these two wires these are wrapped around the member then what we do that and this D shaped block member which you see here this is separate this is separate from this end of the member. This is separated from this end of the member. Now what we do that 
end block is moved away from the end of the beam and which thereby causes tension in the tendon. See here, this end member which is of T shape, we have wrapped around these uh, wires. Now this D shaped end member will be moved away from the beam. That if this is the beam, then what we will do? We will be trying to move this, we will, we, will, we will be trying to move this end block away from the beam in this direction. So what will happen when we are with the help of this, these hydraulic jacks, we are trying to move this end block away from this concrete member. What will happen? Tensile forces will be generated in these wires or the tendons. Now, what, what we will do? Now the gap between, when we are moving this end block away from this beam, then certainly a gap will be generated between the end block and the main, main member or the main beam. Then this gap will be filled with the concrete and this will be allowed to set. So what will happen that now this gap has been filled with the concrete and now it is allowed to set. or after uh, by the forces
one of that value this is the size that you see and it is torque see this is this or these two events is done using this device in which this on one end of this this house Tensile strength wires. These, these are put inside. First, so the clamp plates. These are the clamp plates, and these clamp plates are held in position using the bolts. So these are the two the you can the that have the What is the difference? First case, we are doing the pre and the concrete cutting. It is the force of the pass the In case, in the Then after taking stuff Between 
say comparison between the bonded and the unbonded. So in these two lectures uh, that we uh, discussed in the last time and this time. So we have covered uh, the pre-stressing systems. First we discussed about that what is pre-stressing, what pre-stressing systems are different systems are available. Then I told you about uh, uh, pre-tensioning that how pre-tensioning is done, what are the different uh, ways of doing the and chemical is given and 
which will inform you 